Okay, so today I'm gonna to talk about chronic myocardial injury. So let's say we have a patient, we measure their troponin, it's high. So we repeat it and it's still high, it hasn't changed very much. So we've got a myocardial injury because we've got a high troponin, but because it's not changing, we call that a chronic myocardial injury. And we kind of relax and we say, well, that's not compatible with an acute injury, an acute myocardial infarction. This must have been there for a long time. So we can send the patient home. We know that they've got a high cardiovascular risk at baseline, but this is nothing acute, so we don't need to worry. I'm gonna show you that that's not necessarily true. And in some circumstances, two troponin measurements just isn't enough. So let's have a look at why that might be. And we'll move on. And I'm just gonna show you a graph here. And this graph is fictional troponin levels for a patient. Let me move this way. Uh, here we show troponin levels over time after the onset of a myocardial infarction. So let's say we've got a patient with a myocardial infarction, this hand, and the levels are gonna go up over time. And then they're gonna gradually come down as the patient clears the troponin. Let's say we measure those troponin levels near the time of the peak in troponin concentrations. We're going to get something like this. We measure it at those two X's. This, uh, so the, the level is just peaking. Uh, we've measured two levels, three hours apart, let's say, and there's not much difference between them. So we think it's chronic, but actually all we've done is we've observed two levels that are very close together because they're at the time of the peak troponin concentration. If we carry on measuring the troponin, it'll either keep going down if we're at the peak, or perhaps if we measure them too close together, they'll keep going up. So sometimes we're gonna to have to measure troponin more than twice. How do you decide whether you're going to need to measure it more than twice? Well, first of all, there might be a rise, but it's not quite enough to call it a delta. And in that, that case, you might think, well, we're still on the ascending phase and we just wanna be sure about it. So we wanna measure again to see if there is a trend. The second time would be clinical context. And it always comes back to that, doesn't it? What's the matter with the patient? Do we think that there's a high index of suspicion for a myocardial infarction? Do they, importantly, have another reason for a chronic myocardial injury? So they got chronic kidney disease. Have they got uh, heart failure? Have they got some other kind of cardiac disease that might cause them to have a higher troponin level at baseline? And if they haven't, but we've still seen high troponin levels, just think again, think about what they came in with. If the history is compatible with an NSTEMI, you've got high troponin levels, you kind of didn't expect them, but they're not changing. Don't be reassured by the fact that they're not changing. Repeat the troponin again and see if perhaps you've just caught those levels right at the peak and that's why you've not seen a change. Now, you might not believe me that this is important, but the evidence backs it up. So here's some uh, evidence from a paper in circulation in 2021. Um, I will put a link in the chat. And this just summarizes evidence for the 0, 1 and 0, 3 hour protocols using delta or change criteria based on two troponin values. And I want you to have a look at the bottom of the screen to these, the 0 and 3, particularly this green box here where we rule out at zero and three if the delta troponin is less than seven. So there's less than a seven nanogram per liter change. The sensitivity for a myocardial infarction with a less than seven change is 33%. So you're gonna miss two thirds of the MIs, admittedly in this observed group, which are higher risk, but you're gonna miss two thirds of them. Let me just zoom in on that so I can show you a little bit more clearly. 33% sensitivity with a less than seven, seven nanogram per liter delta in the observed zone. So remember, if the, your clinical suspicion is high, you haven't found a reason for this chronic myocardial injury, then think about repeating the troponin because you may start to see the troponins falling after the patient has passed that peak. And that is not a chronic myocardial injury, it's an acute myocardial injury. And as we've heard before, one cause of that is a myocardial infarction.